Howdy hey, it's Sune, and today I actually wanted to post my first video in a while, which is actually pretty, it's pretty weird getting back into everything. Um, I have been on a pretty, pretty big hiatus for a, uh, pretty sure like three, four years now, but I'm back and really with a one piece series that i thought actually i came up with after i was abandoned <sighs> i was abandoned guys like you know just imagine this imagine this one night you're playing you're playing on your switch with your hermano and all of a sudden he just leaves he leaves he leaves you all alone to do play the duels game in fort knockers by yourself and you end up not winning so after you not win you go and essentially you hop onto youtube where you go to the grand line review and start watching some one piece theory videos honestly i'm glad i did because in the middle of said videos i was watching the dress rose of disaster and all of a sudden i got this idea what if luffy passed on his straw hat for this pure reason that someone looks like ace it would work it would work because he's even though he might get that intelligence later on in life he would still be that kind of himbo that just you know it's for a good reason the person he passes on to is, is a really good person but for the reason that he tells everyone else why he doesn't have his you know trademark straw hat anymore Oh, I passed it on to someone who looks like Ace. I can just like, you know, just imagine like Zoro in the fucking background, but background be like, you did what? Anywho, this does bring us to this speed paint right now. So actually I came up with a, was it not a quartet, quintet, quintet? A group of like five people who would be the original new fakey straw hats, but they wouldn't call themselves the straw hats because we don't we don't copyright here for one piece. Um Oda Sensei top tier. But the captain of said straw hats is this girl who actually does originate from Luffy's home island, and her name, or at least her first name, or yeah, her first name is Camellia like the flower i have no idea why don't even question me bro but i can just imagine she's just a girl who doesn't she's not totally involved in the village but she does you know, you know she lives there yeah and what actually draws Luffy's attention to her isn't the fact that she's you know outgoing or you know any of her personal qualities it's just that girl looks like Ace. Huh. Now, I suppose I am jumping around a little bit, but we can start just a little bit with, you know, a little bit about Camilla, Camilla herself. Camilla? Camilla? Who knows? Now, Camilla is a orphan, definitely an orphan, who actually doesn't know who her parents are, but just grew, grew up on the island under, you know, Mik Mak not Mikano, <laughs> Makano's teachings, quite literally wanted to run the tavern with her, and actually Makano, Makino's son, daughter, I don't know the gender yet, who does, but they do run the tavern, and she just helps out a little bit, you know, running around and passing out drinks. She's very helpful, very, just very much this, you know, the good little girl kind of child back then and then i imagine that luffy you know luffy just he wants to visit he wants to visit his old home but he doesn't you know find the time because i mean if any of you actually have come here from you know discord and you've seen me you know post and say the whole backstory to it then you know that luffy is a commander of like well over 50 to like almost 100 ships i won't say like no 
actually 100 ships, but like it's a good amount of ships. And just pretty much any pirate from like the current timeline would either be his ally or they're actually in the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. So literally, if you know a pirate, they're probably connected to Luffy. And if they're not, they're his enemy that just doesn't want to deal with him. But, you know, after a while, he wants to go home, you know, he wants to go home. He wants to basically go back to his roots. I mean, who wouldn't? The Don would give him a nice big hug for it, you know? But he doesn't want to take that selfish reason. Instead, when, you know, when, like, Zoro and Nami figure, like actually start noticing it, and Sanji does, I don't know, maybe Usopp notices too, they all collectively agree that the original Straw Hats, before the Grand Line, before the Grand Line, want to go and revisit their roots. You know, the original montage of, you know, East Blue. So they each go and visit their island in turn, the last one being Luffy's island, so that they'll just circle back and go home as a, as whatever Nami wants to go, whatever route Nami wants to go through. And literally, when he's there, they decide to throw him a party. Now, who? he's the pirate king. He's the man who loves parties. He loves meat. And what drags him away from the main part of the party? Sanji promising him that somewhere on the island there is more meat. So he goes running around for it, doesn't find it. Instead, he finds a girl on a hilltop. You know, a cliff, but you know. Yeah. So Luffy asks what, why the girl is out there all alone. You know, being his little I have no brain cells, let me be nosy type. So... Eventually, he gets her talking about how she actually wants to go out to sea, but has no, you know, no real reason. She doesn't want to become a marine. She doesn't want to go chasing around pirates and then, you know, becoming an enemy of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, because who wants to do that? But she also doesn't want to set out as a pirate, because then what, what would be the purpose if the One Piece is already found and literally, like... The great, the great age of piracy is over. So, what would be her purpose of setting out? She's that. She's that kind of indecisive little kid. So, when Luffy comes up to her and literally just asks her, "What's what is the one thing she wants in the world? What is her dream?" She li- she just says that she wants to figure out what's beyond the horizon. Now, Luffy doesn't get this. Of course, he doesn't. But it's when. But it's when he fig- it's when he starts thinking like a little bit like Nami. I suppose that he's been talking with her for a while before this before he actually goes to speak with you know little Camellia, and it's and it's this you know little Nami inside of him that makes him go. You remind me of someone, and then it's the dunce of Luffy who just goes. You know you're just like my brother Ace, and he just goes on to explain who Ace is because she was born after the. Um, Marine for after Marine for she was born well after Marine for I'd like to make a mental note that this does take place well into the future like Luffy is at like at least pushing beyond his 40s he's pulling that white beard man he's pulling the white beard he will not be dying anytime soon but Luffy does end up explaining everything about ace and how and just who he was as a person so that when Camille does like end up you know getting his standpoint of like who ace is she says that uh, if some people want him to take this as a mistake then so be it but she goes on to say that she wants to be someone like ace someone who is brave yet strong but can also be there for his family and make promises. Now, when Luffy hears this, he does see Ace in her and at that like exact moment. So, in literally what I can call like a spur of impulse, he straight up takes off his straw hat and plops it on her head and literally says, "Well, then take this straw hat and go and become." and go become gray i suppose i don't don't know what like specifics um this is unscripted but like 
I suppose he w- he wouldn't really have witty line. Just like go become great, and whenever you, and when you find what you're looking for, cut bring this hat back, and show it to me. Now, what would be her response? Who knows? But literally, she's just. I know that for a fact that she's just in awe of like this man who literally conquered the grand line conquered the new world conquered the world conquered the red line conquered every single blue known to man and is now looking upon her uh, passing on the legacy of the straw hat to her when she was just like a normal she's literally just a normal girl she's not a devil fruit user she has like no specific strengths and he's looking onto her to pass down his legacy i find that kind of like a good thing or like an interesting thing in one piece because we have seen a lot of devil fruit users, but we haven't seen a lot of like normal, regular captains other than like Shanks, I suppose. Who have just risen up based on like their skills and their like, you know, sword play or hockey. Just everyone has a devil fruit, which is what makes them powerful. So what I find interesting or what I made in- interesting slash unique about Camellia is the fact that she never becomes a devil fruit user. She's the captain of her own ship who will never swallow devil fruit. So her journey is literally just her fighting on her own wits. Now I know like at this point in like the video, you've seen a full grown Camellia with the straw hat, the extra dangles. That was like my first drawing of her. I- I'm gonna use it as like a color reference from now on, but like, um, she is holding a staff, which is her weapon. So I guess she pulls like a Nami, but this staff will never leave her side. It, she will always have a staff weapon. I know that for a fact. She's going to keep her staff weapon. I think that maybe in the future she gets some sea stone on it so that she can properly fight, you know, devil fruit users before she gets the hang of like armament hockey. I haven't decided whether or not she is a user of conqueror's hockey. She, I feel like it would be an interesting thing if she unlocks Conqueror's Hockey, but like not in the beginning. Maybe she has like a flash, like suppose like, I think it was like Ace did when he was younger. But she does, she, for a fact, she does, she does have Observation Hockey. She, it, but when she was younger, it was just boiled down to, you have amazing eyesight. Like you notice a lot of things and you seem to know you seem to have this good, you know, air about you on the battlefield. Like, you have this good battle sense. But, back to the little story. So after Luffy takes off from the island, he makes her promise that when, you know, for a fact, that when she finds what she's looking for out on the sea, to bring his hat back to him, and it will be then where she'll know exactly what she's been looking for since she's looked out onto the horizon. Which I find to be like a nice, good message to leave behind to her. And the way that Camellia takes this is that she has been passed on a reason to go out to sea. And it's not like she's, it's not like she's upset about it. She's actually pretty happy that she actually now has a reason to set out to sea and just be, if she, if she wants to be a pirate, she can be a pirate. If she wants to be a marine, (laughs) <laughs> she can be a marine and if she just wants to be out to sea you know floating around like Mihawk does then she can just go out to sea but I guess it's this point where she just she actually hears a nice little tale from Makino about Luffy's past with Shanks is Shanks still alive in this timeline I don't know but she does go on to talk about how Shanks influenced Luffy so much that he did become a pirate and set out to become the Pirate King. But when Cam- but when she thinks, well, actually when she tells Camellia, like, hey, you want to become the Pirate King too? Or like the Pirate Queen? Or just like, asks her that general question, Camellia just goes, I don't know if I want to be the Pirate Queen, but I do know that I want to know what's like out there. I want to know what's in the world. And if it takes me becoming the Pirate Queen, then I suppose me and Luffy will have a nice fight before 
we before I actually passed his hat back to him. Or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how it will officially go down. I probably will write it down somewhere and then come back to you like another one. Because this will become a series because I, you know, as you see, there's only one little child here. And it's the beginning of her journey. We haven't gotten to the other fakey straw hats or the originals from the East Blue. Now, I do know for a fact that there will be five of them. I have cooked them down to just these to like where they came from based on like their power based on like not their powers but like who they are and like their personalities so i guess i'll get you like a little slivet right now so there is camellia the captain who is devil fruitless has observation hockey will obtain armament hockey and now it's a question of whether or not she will have conquerors hockey in the future she will never get a devil fruit so she and she actually does not want to swim so I, I do imagine her being like the one person to go and save like the majority of the straw hat, not the straw hats, the majority of her crew from like sinking once they like fall into the ocean. I feel like it would be a nice turn of events. So like instead of like always having to save the captain who falls into the water, it's the captain who takes on the responsibility sometimes just like, I have a himbo crew. Let me go save them again. And it's just like, I feel like she would be happy to take them out of the water sometimes just and other times she would just like question why in the world did they fall into the water knowing that they have devil fruit use powers i feel like she feel that way specifically for her first mate which his name is loy now i think it's like Nar nariko loy his name is entirely feminine and i find it very funny and he is a devil fruit user. He's a user of, I, I think it's called the Ito Ito no Mi model Thunderbird. These are, these, these are like, these are lightning birds with three sets of wings. And I think it's three tails. Core of the story is he is a giant bird with three wings, three tails and electrical powers who has a bad habit of running out of stamina and falling into the ocean. And I feel like she would just like notice sometimes like when he falls into the ocean or like when he falls overboard or just like whenever he gets comes in contact with the ocean, she just goes, you are a bird, you can fly, yet you continuously fall into the ocean. I don't get it. Now I have deducted that he might be like be used as like a emergency transportation service, but he's himbo. I love him. The next one is the navigator, which ironic. That's what comes next. It's either the navigator. Actually, the navigator you meet second, but it's not. He's not recruited second. I haven't get, come up with a name for him, but he was a he was a marine. He actually was one of the marines who had captured Loy whenever he was on the ship. You. Yeah, Loy was captured specifically for his devil fruit powers. But on the ship, the Marine who had become their navigator found that his treatment was overly harsh and disrespectful and it disrespected the ideals of what a Marine should be like. However, when Loy ended up escaping, he went after Loy in order to capture him. But when he found Camellia and just how her um, her beliefs are, that was when he decided to he actually decided to take a different route and said and said if she was going to continuously be this um i will fight for i will fight for the people i care about then he will actually follow her now i did say that he wasn't the next one recruited because on the island that loy escaped to he does meet camellia but he also meets this mechanic engineer girl that will actually become the ship sniper i believe either the sniper or the shipwright i haven't decided yet whether or not i'll give her like a devil fruit that actually i call it the metal metal fruit for like no reason and she literally can turn she can like her body is metal and she can turn things like and she can like produce metals that will help you know repair the ship and i don't know if i want her to be met like in the east blue or on the grand line um that is actually a thing i actually have to figure out but like i know that we meet her on the in the east blue she is part of the original east blue pirates and 
maybe her devil fruit comes onto the grand line and she decides to eat it out like no reason maybe she's hungry but she will she will become the ship sniper she is a she is a great shot i wouldn't say as great as Usopp, but like she is she is definitely an asset they could use and we'll take the position of the sniper, but mostly the ship ride because, you know, mechanic, engineer, blah, blah, blah. And that is where they get their ship. Now, have I designed the ship? No way on this earth I have I designed the ship right already. No, I haven't. And after she is recruited, the cook, not the cook, the navigator is recruited. The cook comes last and she's literally a bookworm. I have no idea where she comes in. I don't know exactly what she'll be like all i know is that she's a bookworm because she looked good holding a book and she has a long braid that's all i know about her but with all that um out of the way that is the beginning of the fakie straw hats this does take place well into the future but if you do like this then make sure to leave a like comment what you might want to happen in this story you know um any feedback that i can actually make these characters better um, but actually, I know this was like all thrown together. This was unscripted, but, um, thank you for watching and actually have a nice day, y'all.